My question is, who will precipitate uh, uh, the Third World War or Battle of Armageddon? Now, I don't believe there's going to be no Third World War, okay? Because um, NATO doesn't have anybody that is formidable to fight a Third World War. Even Iran and Syria, all I believe that, you know, they will cause some problems. You can just do a carpet bombing and everything and they're, they're done and, and, and so on. Um, yeah, there can be some repercussions, but it's not a lead to no third world war, no sustained battle, and all this kind of stuff. Damage on both sides. They can just suffer uh, relentless, you know, uh, demolitions, and, and, and there's the end of that. But the Battle of Armageddon is not a third war. The Battle of Armageddon is when the Antichrist declares himself emperor of the world. Um, you know, foment a lot of problems in the Middle East, foment problems everywhere. Have people uh, sitting in, in in Wall Street and in LA, and then when the economies of the world collapse, then he's going to come on promising peace and safety. You know, the Bible says that there will be sudden destruction, and I'm not sure if the Antichrist is so dumb. He doesn't study the Bible. He doesn't have advisors. Uh, of course, they have the devil meeting with them. And my understanding is that they have the various conferences, and there's a medium person who the devil will speak through. Uh, this person, they indicated that the meeting is about to start, and this fellow do a trembling thing, roll up the eyes, and the devil takes over. And the devil tells them what to do. And that's why the Bible says the churn of darkness are wiser than the churn of light, because we as Christians, we want to, you know, start thinking and say, hey, I know what to do, instead of going to ask God, Lord, what should we do here? I mean, it's so humiliating to ask God what to do. But these people, the enemy and the evil ones, they have Satan tell them what to do. And in that case, they are wiser because, for example, we're having problems today which started fermenting 50 years ago. And that's the devil's prompting. I mean, there's no nation that plans so long term. Russia was trying it, but they had to put Israel in the Middle East, started the UN, and some other things that, you know, are now bringing things on to fruition. But the question is, um, will Israel or uh, uh, South Korea precipitate whatever action will lead to um, the destruction of the world's economies and so on, and, and, and serious conflict. Now I see where uh, South Korea fired on North Korea fishing vessels. And I see where uh, the President of uh, Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu, he is speaking to the American people now. He wants us to develop a hard line on, on Iran and to maybe uh, let them go ahead and start the war and then we're going to help him out and so forth. Um, and so are we locked into this? Can we tell him privately, like, listen, bro, you know, if you're going to start a war over there, you're going to have to handle it yourself, bro, and tell South Korea, you know what? You don't fire on the North Koreans, man. You use peace, okay? Um, you know, like, tell them, like, get out of waters, you know, uh, use whatever pressure, but don't start a war over there now because you're going to draft America in, China going to start, you know, you don't know how Asia is going to align itself. You don't know what Japan, everybody in Asia will do. Maybe they, they unite, and um, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't want to go down that road to that scenario. But all I'm saying is that South Korea could start something here. And um, I don't know if we have an indelible, um, a, a lot of kind of change in, oh, we shall defend you, South Korea, no matter what you do or no matter what happens, we are right here for you. Same thing with Israel. You know, I know uh, Mitt Romney saying that, man, listen, man, you know, we, we back you up, you know, you talk. You know, Iran, it's good. I mean, these folks, um, he don't understand what he's getting into. And as a religious man, he was a past in the Mormon church. Um, I, I better don't go there with an analysis of the Mormons and him and all that kind of stuff. But as a Christian, he should know what the Bible says about these Muslims. And, um, you know, that Israel shouldn't have been in the Middle East. You see, the enemy put Israel in the Middle East. Make it comfortable and say, you see, they're the only ones that support you. Uh, all the rest is studying the Soviet Union. So he said, yes, we're happy to have Israel there. Soviet Union is over. Just like all the Soviet Union tell Castro, how about you on your own? Not the Soviet Union, Russia told Castro. Man, you're on your own, bro. You know, we're struggling here. Bye. We're not the Soviet Union. We're Russia. And, you know, you take care of business. I think we should tell Israel after the Soviet Union fell. Man, you're on your own. But you see, historically, Israel has always worked with the nations that are powerful. And they always get in that check. They worked with Egypt, and, and when Babylon was threatening, they still went ahead. When Iran, <laughs> Iraq was threatening, they still went ahead and, and talking to um, Egypt and 
uh, the Babylonian king went on and captured them and take them off to Babylon and all that kind of stuff. And then they developed a relationship with Babylon and they get that money and so on. And then when the Medes and the Persians came on, the Iran, they, they got money from them again. And, and, uh, and then the Greeks and then the Romans. And then Germany, where the superpower ship was until the Second World War. And then comes to America. So they always gain that money. But you see, um, Israel made God cry. God said, look, I've sent my servants, trusted servants, to go and talk to Israel. And Israel killed all of them. Go and do what I asked them to do. So he said, you know what, I'm going to send my son, Jesus. And, and maybe they're going to listen to him. Or they crucified him too. So Jesus cried, man. Jesus said, look, how often would I love these people and would like to give them all the need and everything, but they won't. They just like the only way. You know, God was in charge of Israel. Nations are not kings. You know what they said? We want a king like nations around us. But God saying, Samuel said, Lord, I'm disappointing you because I couldn't convince Israel. And maybe something I did made them want to go and have a king. God said, no, it's not you to reject them. They're rejecting me. Okay. So now how on earth any nation could come now and protect Israel and to help Israel out? I mean, they've always been historically, you know, fearful people. They're always afraid this, they're always afraid that. And they've gone straight in the middle of uh, ants' nest. And they call the people, hey man, come in here and help me, bro, because you know I mean, it's ants' nest. And that's not God's plan. God's plan was they were to stay scattered, not to go down there, because God knew that it's going to cause a problem. You know, some of these jokey uh, theologians in America and around the place talk about, oh, Israel, the Bible promised that they would go back to the homeland. It happened in the 50s and all this stuff. I mean, all those promises were already fulfilled. But there was justification, I said earlier, when the Soviet Union was ranting and raving. But now today, you know, they're just going to... So, so the question is that whether Israel you know, start something with Iran or, or South Korea and start something with North Korea and then China and come in and, and all this kind of stuff. I mean, the world's economy is so fragile that we need some some extensive period of peace so we could, you know, recuperate and, and get our economies going, get jobs going and everything else. And the enemy, the Antichrist, he wants to come to power and so he's pushing the fire. And, um, as I said earlier, some people, like the Bush family, thought that Saddam was uh, the, the, the nation that might, you know, come and knock off America. But you see, they didn't study history properly. I don't know what they did at Yale. But the question is this. Nations lose out. You know, God said, look, Babylon, you're the head of gold. But a nation inferior to you, which is silver, which was the Medes and Persians, will come and conquer you. And so it will continue on the road. The bronze will come on iron and iron and clay and so on. They got inferior. So it's not a matter of somebody has to be superior, strong, or big army. You know, the ruling people always ease up on the kids. Man, you, you sleep late, it's okay. Don't feel like studying that is good. You know, uh, you know, watch a whole bunch of dumb movies and, and lose your strength that, you know, helped you to be strong emotionally and get hard. And, 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 you know, it's okay to smoke a little marijuana and affect your will so that you can't make decisions and stick with it and understand also because of the intellect problem that, you know, some things you, you better leave it alone. So we must start messing with it. See what I'm saying? So, um, so he went out there thinking that, you know, if you knock off Saddam, that would be the end of the threat. But, you know, they weren't protecting the kids. They weren't educating the kids right. And, and so, uh, look, in a way, everything almost collapsed without him. Well, of course, not. I should say without his help. But, you know, I mean, going in, doing something which God doesn't approve of and so on. And, and you know, the whole many eyes, etc., etc. So, um, you know, somebody need to tell South Korea to chill out and tell Israel that, look, these people, we don't believe that, no, no, they can't fire up, no, no, you have no, you know, they no, you will move them back. And then they will crap. We have to go pursue them and want to start a thing over there. So, when we, you see, the deal was that uh, this spring revolution foolishness was to end up in going to uh, uh, a sad country there, Syria, knock them off. That these little boys and, and these people who have no experience in leadership take over. And then they move into Iran, knock off the Vietnam, uh, molas and then boys that run and stuff, and let every, them young boys come on every every day having some new government or whatever, and then attack the embassy, the enemy, and get people to like make that movie. Same people that started this spring revolution, same people that started this uh, uh, Occupy Washington and all over the place, same people that put Israel in the Middle East, same people that started the UN. 
the same people that started communism, the same people that was behind Hitler, these same people are also trying to push us into something that will bust us up and then they're going to come to power. But, oh, I was saying that with all this theology knowledge they have, they don't see where God says that they may seem to get a little bit of success with their stupidness, but eventually when the kings or when the presidents and the prime ministers and other people come to realize that they were deceived, because the Bible does say that the leaders of the world are drunk with the wine of the wrath of the Antichrist fornication. It's fornication in that you're supposed to be married to Jesus, he called himself Christian and supposed to be Jesus, but he's messing with the devil. So that is fornication, spiritually speaking. Right? And uh, the secret societies and all these other stuff that they have going on, these leaders into that, and I don't know how this either hypnotize them or whatever it is do, but they're not thinking straight. Europe, instead of trying to create jobs so that they could get taxes in, they could get some extra money coming in so they could pay down the debt, they're trying to austerity and we want to integrate. I mean, those two things aren't necessary. I mean, pull the spending, spend a little more, stimulus, like Obama, get people working, and, and everything's going to be good. So, um, the world is drunk. And, uh, um, you know, when they catch themselves, and they get a little sober, but it might be too late because they already started the battle of Armageddon, they already aligned themselves with the enemy of God, etc. So, I'm not sure if the, the vengeance on the Antichrist, they're going to kill the Antichrist and destroy what he was trying to achieve because, you know, it's not going to work anyway. The Bible says when he thinks in his peace is going to be sudden destruction. So it's not going to work. And they, these leaders will come and finish up whatever remains. So doesn't he know that? So why does he want to try it? The Bible shows that it can happen, but that's how the devil works. And, um, you know, so South Korea and Israel need to, you know, start wars that day. I say, hey, I don't need to help my it, bro. I can take care of this by myself, you know. And and um, I, I don't know if the Middle East would have ever accepted Israel, but this kind of haughty behavior they demonstrated over there, nobody would even, you know, I told, you know, tolerate them. But, you know, they have NATO and other people uh, guaranteeing them some protection. So, but, I mean, you can't protect Israel, man. God couldn't even protect them. Or not necessarily. They didn't want God's protection. When he Say, look, I, how often like a hand would gather chicks, I try to gather these people, but they don't want to be gathered up. They want to be suffering, they like stuff, but, you know, any kind of progressive and positive. And, um, you know, so, you know, don't start no stuff, man, because, um, you know, you don't have much to lose. Then Muslims going to try to run you over, and, 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 and the economy is going to collapse, and uh, everybody going to be suffering. So, let's have some more peace, man. The end is going to come anyway. But it's not with all this fireworks that the scripture predicts. We don't have to suffer the fireworks. Maybe other people who are down and following the devil's plan they end up in the fireworks. But, you know, people are smart and, and, and looking at things carefully don't have to fall into that kind of problem.